Hi! Nobody. Jemima and Lucy aren't here. I'm on my own doing the Closet Confessions and it's Saturday. But I'm going to take you through what I pack for a four day trip with hand luggage to New York. My hair is waiting to have the color done so I just washed it. And this is the state of my hair when I've done nothing to it. I was given this shirt just now. I went shopping with a friend of mine and she bought me one so we could be twinning and I love it. It's from Marnie. And my jeans are the ones that you like a lot from Paige. When I'm packing for a trip, the first outfit I think about is my travel outfit because what you wear to travel is the beginning of your adventure, whether it's an adventure for work, which my New York trip is, or an adventure for pleasure, it should start the moment you leave your house. I had my travel outfit planned, and I'm gonna show you what it is now. But I generally change on the plane. When I'm on a long trip, I'll always bring an outfit to wear on the flight because I'm mucky on the flight and I spill things. And when I land, I might be going straight to something. So I always have a little plane outfit. So my plane outfit is generally the most comfortable thing I can find. So for me, it's my me and M sort of leggings, which have this nice big high waistband. And they're sort of elegant. They're not, they're schlumpy as it were, which is comfy for me. I'm not compromising. They're just brilliant. And then a t-shirt, which I'll in. This one is some good American, but the other ones I get a lot are from Zara. And then I always take a cashmere jumper on the plane, which is thin and easy to put somewhere. And this one is from Costa. I've had it for years and it has little armhole sleeves. I get cold on planes. So any flight that's over six hours, I'll take a little plane outfit. Let's talk luggage. Now I have spent forever trying to find the luggage that will carry the most that can be holdall. And I invest in these suitcases from Ramoa. I have a black one and I've recently got a silver one, but these are called Cabin Plus. They resemble normal hand luggage size and definitely resemble it when you have always your handbag on top. And when I'm doing two weeks away, I'll have quite a big handbag on top. So this is one from Tom Brown that I just bought in sale at Harrods, which I will probably take to Spain. I love this. It is slightly like the French flag. I got it 60% off. So happy with that bag. And I collect these, these bags, what I call sort of, you know, airport bags. This is a Prada one, which I adore. And that's what I'm gonna take for this trip to New York. Other big, big ones that I adore. This is crazy time, but, and this is like people would say, can you get away with that? But I have been known to take this mother as my my handbag because this and this is enough for three weeks in the summer we've got the details out of the way let's get on to the wardrobe now going to new york for this trip i leave tomorrow morning i arrive i have to go straight to a meeting it's 31 degrees in new york so i need an outfit for that then i'm going to go to a, a dinner that evening i need something for that that's two outfits the next day i do press all day in my room that's three outfits and then i do another event that's four outfits and then the next day i do press all day in my room that's five outfits and then i go back to london that's a sixth thing to wear or what i flew out in so five things for sure and six as a backup plan in case i do some spillage let's start now with the travel outfit key components of a travel outfit are that it's comfortable and that it won't crease so i could wear this on the plane as well these are navy silky trousers from zara and they're part of a suit and i just saw this and i thought fantastic i wear the t-shirt with shoulder pads because the jacket has no shoulder pad in it and i don't want it to be floppy so that is my travel outfit it feels light it's aerated and if i was going to keep this on for when i land i might be tired after the flight so i just whisk on my little YSL scarf in metallic. I'm feeling awake and I'm going to show you what I put on the flight for my skin. But that to me, joyous travel outfit. I'm so unbelievably coordinated with my suitcase and with my bag. And I know these are trivial little things, but they matter to me. Now, I usually quite like to have a little crossbody bag. And I did have a little navy one, which I've lost, which really guts me. So I'm contemplating which bag I will take for my trip. So I've going to be this white one from Lutz Morris and this will carry my passport and everything else. It goes with my trainers, the Russell Bromley trainers, and that to me means passport and everything is here. All my things that I don't want to have to get out of my suitcase to put through the machine are gonna be in here, and clothes and shoes and everything else in there. My alternative I could do 
to this bag is I've got recently this looks Morris in metallic. So I could do that as my bag as well. It reads white, but it's kind of silvery. But that's travel. And then when I arrive in New York, it'd be really hot. I will have changed on the plane. And then I'll just literally have that. And even if it's 28 degrees, I'll be fine because I'm in a cotton t-shirt. It has side aeration here. It's not tight, not wearing a bra or anything, just relaxed. I don't feel I've just got off a plane and I'm crumpled and I'm ready to hit New York. Next outfit. This is a old, very old, I think about seven, eight years old, Chloe top. It's my favorite summer top. If I, I never ever put this in the hole. I always put this in hand like I'm scared I'd lose it. But it's got great aeration because there's little holes there. And these are some old Serena Butte trousers I got from sale. I really like cotton. When I arrive in New York, I'll go to my hotel and I might change into this outfit if I'm feeling it. I probably will actually because I'll put my travel outfit in the cupboard and I'll put this on and then I'll go and do my meetings in New York. And because there's air conditioned offices, I will probably just have a jacket gently over my shoulder and it won't feel too hot because I'm wearing white um, and I'll have my white crossbody bag over there. And I might also, so I, I sort of depending on what kind of people I'm meeting, depends on whether I want to feel I'm masculine, androgynous or feminine. It's weird, but I just think about these things. I might just do one little row of pearls and then I'll probably just put on some BFF and really glow up my skin. I probably would wear my cuffs. I feel they're like my sort of signature now. These are the Tiffany cuffs I got for my birthday and I adore them and I feel it makes things very smart immediately and stylish by putting those on. And I think with the pearls, they're kind of fab because the pearls have some silver in them. The more I think about it now, the more I am thinking maybe would I do the white bag. Like that. When I do a jacket over my shoulders, I generally put the white bag underneath the jacket like that. So if I take that off, I've still got the bag there, as opposed to trying to put it. Otherwise you think, how do I put that bag on? So that's my meetings in the afternoon when I get to New York. I was in two minds about getting this Vampire's Wife dress because I thought it's really feminine and pretty. And is it too feminine and pretty for me? You know, is it cool enough? But, you know, if I'm going out for supper in New York and it's outside and it's still sunny, I might just do this with my cuffs, put on a mad glasses and have on some loafers. And I just think it's fun and easy and it's incredibly light. And, you know, you don't want any tight leg trousers when it's very hot, 31 degrees, and you're in a city, but you don't want to dress like you're on holiday. So this to me is just a good shape for my body. This is my dinner night one look. Day two, I might have been up since five because I have jet lag and I got press all day in my hotel room. So I can wear something fun that is going to be the Vampire's Wife shirt. I'm going to tuck it in a certain way. Instead of just tucking it in like that, which can just feel a bit boring, I'm going to tuck one side in like that and the other side in like that. And it gives it just a nice little sort of twist detail to the shirt. And I've got these very old Joseph trousers, which I cropped a few years ago, and they've just taken on another new lease of life. So the crop just enables them to feel a little bit cooler. I'm wearing them with my Prada um, loafers. I might wear them with my trainers too, but I just like that combination of the gray with the shimmer. I feel good in this. I feel I'll chat all day. I won't look tired because this axe is sort of mirror up to my face and stops me looking really tired. Second night, I'm doing a big event at Saks. So I'm going to wear the Vampire's Wife dress. Now this is one that shrunk a bit at the dry cleaner. So I got to do something so that you don't actually see the indent of my tummy button. Because I do love this dress and I really want to wear it. I'm going to see if there's anywhere I can save it. I'm slim, but I don't want you to see the indent of my tummy. Do we agree? Not just doesn't look great. So in my little Trini London Chepstow bag is my underwear. This is how I pack for a two day trip. And then here is all my kind of underwear. That's in here I've got two pairs of my favorite Spanx. And when I travel, I tend to bloat. So I do need Spanx when I'm wearing very fitted dresses. This is the more comfortable version. This is sort of what I call Spanx light. I don't know which one it is. I wear size medium, but it's just going to give gentle and it, it sort of ends here and it, it would just like any ripple effects will go. And then this is a sort of shorter version. I did actually have a sturdier version than both of them. I'm gonna try the first version and see if that's gonna help so that you don't see my tummy button. Not only do they go very high up, but they go just to the point of the dress. So you don't see another bit of fabric. They go right to the seam. And I just feel more confident to wear the dress. I think now I can wear the dress 
and I don't feel so noticeably the indent of my tummy button. Okay, that is outfit for the second day, and then with it, I'll accessorize, I bought hardly any jewelry really, with cuffs like that, and with a little pair of um, gray earrings. Oh, and shoes are Robert Clergery, and they are my silver ones, and I'm only going to wear them for this dress, but I feel as it's a sort of very special event, I need to bring shoes just for this dress. Day two press day, I haven't decided which outfit I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna show you both. This is a top I had made by a Susanna, who's a seamstress I work with a bit, and um, I just wanted a silk version of the t-shirt from Zara, so I copied it. And these trousers are from Loewe. 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 Never know how to pronounce it, but I love them. They're kind of cool, I feel cool in them. And then on top, I was going to, because I'm seeing a lot of press who are either beauty press or fashion beauty press, so I just wanted to kind of make a statement. And a lot of the time, I'm sitting on the sofa. So I want to wow the moment. So what I like about wearing the um, silk shoulder pad top underneath is it gives a bit more structure to this pecker of our top. I can tuck this in, have the trousers high, and have the sequins coming over. And then again, I would probably wear my cuffs like that. And I'm in my hotel room all day, so I don't think I'm gonna feel hot. But I just think it's a very cool look for New York, and I do feel everyone in New York is super cool. And again, I'm doing metallic. My alternative to this, I'm going to show you next, but um, this is option one, and I'll show you option two. From a secondhand shop in London called Pandora's, and it's by Del Pozo. I saw it in the window. It's a brilliant secondhand shop. It's been there since literally my mother used to go there. And they have amazing things, and prices are pretty good. I got this for £200. So I can wear it like this or I can wear it like that. It's really oversized and I've got it at the moment with Serena Butte, which looks way too baggy with baggy. So I was thinking two things. First of all, I could tuck in the excess fabric, but the trousers are also too long for the only pair of trainers that I'm taking right now. And they're too big because I bought them a year ago and I bought them too big because I want to wear them low and slouchy. So I'm going to get Prada Belt in metallic. This is, don't forget, for day two, just to remind ourselves, day two press, wanting to look cool and impress the press, which should be enough just to do it with the products. But I also like, it's exciting to dress icy and they expect me to dress in something interesting and I like to please. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring those right in so I can wear them really high and then pull that over like that so I've got now some drapage. I'll probably get my cuffs but there's something sort of dramatic and aerated about this look and I just don't know which one to wear and I wish this was live so I could say guys hey which one? Which one guys? Anyway leave your comments below which one you would have preferred for me to wear for day two of the press and now I'm gonna pack it all. Just to say I'm not a roller, I'm a folder. So I always look at things and I think proportionally, how am I going to fold them? So with this, I'm going to fold it three times and it will then go into the suitcase. So one, two, three, and I check it with the width of the suitcase and I fold it in half and it just fits in like the baby was born in the case. Number one. Okay, then trousers, do the same again. They're quite wide. So I'm gonna fold them in half, go like that. I just always have been a folder and not a roller. And if they're longer than the length of the case, then I take that tiny little bit of the extra length and then I go backwards with it, let it go down and softly go in there. Oh, it's so satisfying. I usually fold by what I think is going to crease the least to the most. But in this instance, I think we're all right. And then I also do what has to go in the case, as opposed to what's a last minute thing. So you'll notice I've already made the yellow a priority. That's the direction I'm heading, but I do, I do love the other one. Did I show you the other one? Oh, I did, okay. With this dress, I'm just going to take the ruffle in there, and then I'm going to go and take the little sleeve, fold it in once like that there, and then I'm gonna fold the whole thing over and then gently ease it out until it's exactly the size of the suitcase. And put on my cover there. So one side, all the clothes I need to wear. So on this side, I'm going to do accessories. God, that was so satisfying, I'll tell you. So I do need to take these shoes for sure. There, and I put them in, they fit quite well, just sort of either side of the bars of the suitcase. I will take my Pradas because I'm not going to be wearing them when I'm traveling. 
So I'm going to show you now the other bits that I'm going to put in my case. Okay, so final bit packing is stuff I need for the flight, I'm going to put in there. Don't need knickers for the flight. I don't need my spare sunglasses for the flight. Um, and I don't need jewellery for the flight. So I'm going to put my jewellery like that in there. My jewellery, I've got some long necklaces, I've got my pearls, I've got my Trini ring, and I've got some earrings. So that's great. Put those in there like that. I've also got my belt, which can go in there too, that I might wear with the silver outfit. So I really unfold it tightly and I can put that in a shoe easily. So I'm going to put that in that silver shoe. This is my kind of box of everything that I might need. And it has things in it like wet, hanky things. It has a light if I need it. It has a mask for the flight, but I also have my dozy mask, which I love. So I'm going to take that instead. A few sort of medical things, earplugs. So that kind of I want on the plane. This is an Atlantic bag, which you can buy for Trini London. So I put that in here. I didn't purposely make them to fit exactly in here, but they fit exactly in here. This is my Pierre Hardy bag. I got secondhand on Bestia Collective. I always have my travel documents in it. I have money, I have my itinerary, I have a mask in case I need it. And I have my passport and some dollars. I think I said that. And that goes in there as well. That can go sideways. Then I have a scarf that I might need on the flight. I've got my supplements here, which I put into what I get on Amazon. And this is morning and evening. So I'm going to put those. I don't need those for the flight. So I put them there. A little hair tie I don't need for the flight. Hair brush I don't need for the flight. I'm going to put that inside a pair of shoes. Because my shoes are quite clean and my feet totally clean. I'm going to wear those. Don't need that. Don't need that. I'm not going to use them. I always get blisters. Blisters. Thank you, Lila. And those I'm going to need on the plane. My makeup I will not need on the plane. And the brilliant thing about Trini London makeup is that it's solid. So none of them are required to go through and be taken out. So I can put that separately, but I might want to show you on the flight, I might do a little film of all these amazing combinations of makeup I've got. So I think if I can, I'm gonna put that in this other bag here and just have that to hand. So that slots in beautifully. I've got here all the products I need for skincare, including eye drops and de Mamiel um, drops, which I love, altitude drops. I've also got this new thing I adore, and it's called Peep Club, and it's to make your eyes feel fresh. It's so fantastic, because on planes, you know you can get dry eyes, but you have your eyes closed, and you just do this. It gives your eyes, like if you've got a migraine or heavy eyes, it's amazing. And then I've got Woody Fig, my favorite fragrance from Samuel Reva. I've got brightening eye drops for inside my eyes, a really small deodorant, which is the refill from Wild. And I'm just taking the refill because I can push it up from inside. And it's much smaller than my Dr. Hauschka. Takes up they no room. What? They do travel size ones. Well, anyway, I just got that one. And that all fits in here beautifully. Well, it did, but now I've got to repack it once. Like, I've taken all my liquid things from Trini London, like my BFF, my de stress and rebalance together, moisturizer, all in the teapots, which you can buy separately. I've got some M. V Rose Water Mist, which I'm going to use on the plane. I've got our moisturizer and retinoids and all things in these Muji little containers, which are utterly brilliant. So everything fits in there, and it's more than enough to do my full uncompromised skincare routine using all Trini London products. That goes in here, obviously, because they're going to want me to show it. Then I need a scarf for the plane because I get cold, which is going to be there. And then I need some headphones for the plane, which are here. Which I'm going to take a bit of space those headphones. That's a bit irritating. Then I've got my lingerie here. I've got an extra scarf here, which I don't really need, actually. So I'm not taking it like that. I've got um, some loose compeds. I don't know why but I've got a little thing that sticks to the back of my phone. And I've got all my charges here. Now, this is a really brilliant trick, is if you travel a lot in the local country, buy the charger from that local country, because they're always smaller. So in here, I've got my Apple extra chargers. I've got an extra phone, but I have like the American already. And so they just take up much less room than trying to have the adapter plug and a charger. And I have one for Europe as well. So it's taken me about 10 years to realize how simple that is to do. So we're just about done. I've got extra space in here, really. So I'm thinking what I might do is I'm going to rearrange that big bag into two bags so that I can put these scarves in here. So I'll be back in a sec. 
it's all done, ready to be packed away. Here everything fits. My only concern is that my lovely Prada bag, which I adore, it doesn't fit a huge amount. It's great for laptops and things, but maybe I just don't want to be flustered with lots of things in, on the plane. So I've just got to fit in there my jogging pants and the jumper because I want to be warm on the plane. And if they fit in, then I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to roll those up. It's the only time I roll, by the way. Um, and put those in the bottom of the case. I've got my iPad and my headphones. My headphones take up quite a lot of room, and I'm new to these, but they're unbelievable, the Apple ones, when you're on the plane, because you just don't hear any babies cry. So that all now fits beautifully. I've even got my little bag inside that bag, so I'm happy with that. Extra pair of headphones. And then here, I'm ready to close the baby. Put that baby there and close it, put that baby there. So, so sorry, not that heavy. <clears throat> so you always have to think, okay, can I get this up and make it look like it's so light? Oh, yeah. But I can, and I'm ready to go pronto. So thank you for watching that very long and convoluted film. But I hope it gives you some tips and hints for when you go traveling next.